Hi, welcome to another Algebra 1 video. In this video, we're looking at section 3.6, part 3, which is linear function transformations. In this video, we will learn about the stretching and shrinking of linear functions. There is a link to part 1 and part 3 in the description if you want to check them out to get a basic understanding of what transformations are and also to learn about the reflection and translation transformations. Before we talk about stretching and shrinking of linear functions, let's do a quick recap on what transformations are. In the first video of linear function transformations, we learned that the parent function of all linear functions is f of x equals to x. We also learned that you can rewrite this function f of x equals to x as y equals to x, where y is your dependent variable and the x is the independent variable. And we know that this is the simplest form of all linear functions that you have. So you could have y equals to x minus 2. You could come up with y equals to 2x. Or you could come up with y equals to 1 plus x. All these are derived functions of the original function f of x equals to x. So as long as you have only x and no constant that is being added, like negative 2 here or a plus 1, then you have the parent function. Over the last two videos, we also learned that there's some linear function transformations namely the translation transformation and the reflection transformation. The translation transformation is given by the equation y equals to x minus h plus k, where your negative h is the horizontal factor, so you could shift the function to the right or to the left, and that k part is your vertical factor, which determines if your function is going to move upwards or downwards. And you can also combine these two transformations like this general equation. So you could have negative h and k like in this equation, in which if your function was x minus 2 plus 6, then your transformation would be 2 units to the right because of that negative 2, and it would be upwards by value of 6 because of the plus 6. In general terms, the stretching and shrinking of linear functions is a definition of the word itself. So if you have a function y equals to x that is graphed on a coordinate plane, then you can stretch it or you could shrink it. And there's different types of stretching and shrinking which I will talk about. The first type of stretching and shrinking is horizontal stretching and horizontal shrinking. So let's begin with horizontal stretching. One way of looking at this is by looking through the equation, which is the general equation f of a times x. We know that when we're talking about horizontal stuff, we're dealing with the x value, which is your independent variable, because x deals with the horizontal axis. So in this case, our a is being multiplied to x, where a can be a number that's greater than zero. Essentially what you're doing in this expression f of ax is that you're multiplying the x component, the horizontal component of the function by some constant which makes it stretch or shrink and that is dependent on your a value. But what makes the difference between horizontal stretching and horizontal shrinking? Well we know that the general expression for each transformation is f of a times x but the difference is in the a. When you're doing a horizontal stretch your a factor is going to be less than 1 but it's going to be greater than 0 so it means that it's going to be a fraction that's not negative. And your horizontal shrinking is going to be f of a times x, but your a value is going to be greater than 1. But what does this mean if you look at them in terms of drawing the function on a coordinate plane? Well, let's begin with horizontal stretching. So on this first coordinate plane, I've graphed the function f of x equals to x plus 1. Now on this graph, we just made x plus 1. We're going to perform a horizontal stretch by some factor a, which we don't know. From the words we know that we're going to stretch this line which is in this direction horizontally so we know that the slope is going to decrease because our line is going to be stretched horizontally. Let's say that we wanted to do a horizontal stretch when a equal to 1 half. So we know that 1 half is less than 1 so it qualifies as a horizontal stretch. Before we do the horizontal stretch where our a value equals to 1 half First, let's plot some values here on this function, f of x equals x plus 1. So we have this first point here, which could be x, which is 1 here, and then 2 on the y. So this is 1 comma 2. And then we have the second point, which is 2 comma 3. Let's perform a horizontal stretch when a equals to 1 half. One thing to note when you're stretching or shrinking horizontally is that your factor a, which is being multiplied by x, could be any number. However, your stretch factor will not be equal to a, but your stretch factor will be equal to 1 over a. So in this case, I'm stretching this function with the a equaling 1 half, but my stretch factor will be given by 1 over a, which means that my stretch factor will be 1 over 1 half, which simplifies to a factor of 2. So what this means is that I'm stretching all my x values on this function by a factor of 2. So now when we perform the horizontal stretch on this function, we know that our horizontal stretch factor is positive 2, 
which means that we're going to multiply all of the x values on this function to get new points by 2. However, our y values will still remain the same, and that's also going to be for the negative numbers. So here we're given that point 1, 2, and if we multiply this x value, since it's a horizontal stretch by 2, we get the new point 2, 2, which is at this point. We know that our x coordinate is 2, so our new point is going to be 4, 3, because 2 times the 2 stretch factor will give us 4, 3, and our new point 4, 3 will be plotted over here. So on the negative side of the original function, f of x equals to x plus 1, I've marked these points over here which are on the negative side. Now let's do the same stretching by a factor of 2 for these negative points over here. Just like these points, we know that we have to multiply the x coordinate of the points by the stretch factor of 2 to get the stretched function. So in this case, when we multiply 2 by negative 1, we get negative 2 comma 0 because we don't multiply it with the y part. So this is our new point, negative 2 comma 0. Similarly, for the second point, negative 2 comma negative 1, we multiply the negative 2, which is the x coordinate in this point, negative 2 comma negative 1, with a stretch factor of 2. So when we multiply negative 2 with 2, but not the y coordinate, we get negative 4 comma negative 1, which gives us this new point, which is over here. Similarly, for 3 comma negative 2, we only multiply the 3, which is the x coordinate in this point, by the stretch factor of 2 to get the stretched point. We know that negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6 and we're not changing the y value. So our new point in this case is going to be negative 6 comma negative 2, which is going to lie over here. Now all we have to do is connect all the dots that we have graphed. Now if we look at the stretched function in the red line and the original function in the blue line, we can see how all of the points in the blue line have been stretched horizontally by a factor of 2 to get a function that's wide and it looks something like the red line. And we also realized that we only affected the x values in the original function. We didn't multiply this 2 with the y values, as the y values are still the same. Another thing to note is that your y-intercept is still the same. It's 0, 1. So whenever you're doing horizontal stretching or horizontal shrinking, your y-intercept will remain the same because you're not affecting the y component. However, your x-intercept has been changed from negative 1, 0 to negative 2, 0 because of the stretch factor on the x-axis. Now let's look at horizontal shrinking on this new coordinate plane for the same function f of x equals to x plus 1. To perform a horizontal shrink for this function, we know that our f of a of x tells us that our a has to be greater than 1. This means that the function is going to be steeper when we do the transformation, unlike the previous one which is horizontal stretching, in which our slope decreased. Let's do a horizontal shrink on this function when a equals to positive 2. You must remember that the stretch factor does not equal to the a over here for horizontal stretching or for horizontal shrinking. So this is going to be a horizontal shrink by a factor of one half. Before we do the transformation, let's plot some points on the original function f of x equals to x plus 1. To perform this horizontal shrink, we're going to follow the stretch factor of one half. So in this case, instead of multiplying it by positive 2 like we did in this case, to stretch it from here to here, Instead, we're going to shrink it so that all the values get squeezed together in a steep line. So for the first point, when we shrink it by a factor of 1 half, our x value will change from positive 1 to positive 1 half, which lies over here. Our y value will remain the same because we're only changing the x coordinate and not the y coordinate. So our point would be 0 0.5, 2. Similarly, for this point over here, we have 2, comma, positive 3. In this case, instead of changing the y coordinate, we're going to change the 2, which is the x coordinate, and we're going to multiply it by 1 half. And doing so, we get positive 1, comma, positive 3, which lies over here. So we can already see that the points of this new line are shrinking this function closer to the y-axis, which will also increase the slope of this graph. Now for the negative numbers, we do the same thing. We multiply all of the x coordinates here in these points by 1 half, and we graph that point without changing the y coordinate. So here we have negative 1, 0, and if we multiply that by 1 half, we get negative 0, 0.5, 0. Here we have negative 2, comma, negative 1. This will become negative 1, comma, negative 1, as 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1. And similarly, for negative 3, comma, negative 2, we will have to half this negative 3, which will give us negative 1, 0.5, comma, negative 2. So our new point will lie over here. And then we just connect the dots. So for this function, we can see that all of the points on this original function, f of x equals x plus 1, our points have been shrinked horizontally. In this case, we halved all of the x values because our a was positive 2, which is greater than 1. 
Note that our y-intercept is still the same, it's 0 comma positive 1, but our x-intercept has been changed, which is just like the transformation we did here, which was the horizontal stretching. And this is it for section 3.6 part 3. I hope you found this video helpful and you understand horizontal stretching and horizontal shrinking transformations. Look out for part 4 and leave a like if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos in the future and I'll see you in the next video.